It's the Flow Friday Night Sports Show, and let's have a look at uh, Eastern Air Netball, Air Peninsula Netball now with Eastern Air and Great Flinders all included, and the queen of EP Netball is back again, Joe Franklin. How are you? I'm doing really well, although a little bit cold. Mind you, it is winter, I suppose. <laughs> we should take it in our stride. Not quite windy yet, but close yeah, but enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That, it's all good. A little bit of rain during the week always um, perks everybody up a little bit. Well, obviously, everybody wants a little bit more, but, um, yeah, a little bit of dampness has been good. Indeed. Uh, it was a pretty interesting weekend. Some very close matches yeah. in the A-grade in Eastern Air Netball, and that's where we'll start. Uh, Kimber yep. Districts, they got over the line. Uh, wasn't without a, a nasty cost for them, though. They beat Central Air United by just the nine goals in the end, 44-35. Unfortunately, though, the injury curse has struck. Yes, it has. Unfortunately for Kimber, um, I believe that Chelsea Wolford has uh, snapped an Achilles or done a, has an Achilles injury. So, um, we yeah, thoughts go out to Chelsea because it's not a very um, nice injury um, and it certainly is a, a big rehab uh, involved when you do that. And, uh, yeah, she'll be hobbling around, I would think, uh, for a few weeks. But, um, yeah, I mean, EP player, association player, um, you just don't replace those very easily. Um, so, yeah, she will be a loss. And certainly I'm not exactly sure what part of the game that occurred, but um, I have no doubt that uh, for Whip to have to uh, try and uh, – shift the side around to cover that um, would not necessarily um, have been easy. Although having said that, they've got a pretty strong um, B-grade side, so um, there certainly will be somebody there who will step up. But, um, you know, when those sorts of things happen during a game, as you know, Jace, it sort of does throw everybody a little bit. So, yep. um, but yeah, Central Air United, um, their coach very happy with their with their efforts um, against Kimber, their, their first hit out there against them. And uh, so they were quite happy with uh, the way that they performed. Like They never really let Kimber get away from them. So uh, that's really showing some positive signs there for the, the Central Air United girls. It certainly is. So uh, good game of netball, that one. I tell you what, though, uh, what? the other game, <laughs> Ports and Cow, this, uh, it's anyway, what, oh, okay. if, we, if we wanted to know how even the A grade was going to be, we didn't have to look much past the B grade where they had a draw, 31 yep. each, and then in the A grade, the Cowgirls got the job done, 43 to 40. Yeah, they did. So that's one to me. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah they did. And look, a very close game. And uh, Cow pretty happy to get their first wins of the season uh, against Ports, who are certainly putting together a whole new look um, group. And they are still trying to work out a couple of combinations. But um, to score 40 goals um, is a really big effort for those girls, considering um, some of um, the seasons that they've had previous. Uh, and then for Cow to be able to ha- um, hold on and uh, keep the pressure up and get away with a, a three-goal win, uh, they were pretty happy with that, with um, incentives there for Cow going to Shannon Jeffries and uh, Ellie Burton. So uh, both of those girls had uh, had really good games, and uh, Ellie particularly um, showed up through the centre court and uh, with her defensive skills um, certainly turned over enough ball to uh, keep the Cow girls in it. And uh, they actually shot not, uh, quite actually, considering... Um, um, that they also are a new combination. So, um, yeah, Tracy, pretty happy with that that first up win and hoping that they can build on it from here. Well, let's hope they can. We've got ourselves an even comp here. If we have a look at the mm-hmm. matches coming up this weekend, uh, we've got some absolute rippers, I reckon. Centrally United will host Ports at Warren Boo. And whilst Ports might be at the bottom of the ladder at the moment, they're not without a chance here. No, and they, you know, they they haven't been absolutely thumped. Like you know, in previous seasons, they've sort of had a, a couple of real, um, real beatings. Um, but this year, there's around about the mark. And you know, travelling to Warrnambool, so it'll be their first experience at uh, uh, travelling to Warrnambool and, and playing out there. And there's no doubt the Central Air United will throw it on out there. They yeah, they always do. But um, Central Air United are very tall um, at either end of the court. Um, so ports are going to have to try and combat that. Um, they want to keep the ball uh, low uh, and good, strong, quick passes just to keep those Central Air United girls on their toes. But um, I think it will be very even. Um, I, oh, I think that maybe at home, Central Air United uh, might be able to get themselves over the line. And I guess they will be looking for that win as well. Um, just to you know, give themselves a little bit more confidence and uh, get them uh, along the way for the rest of the season. But then, so Ports, 
Yeah. They're really, you know, they're going to be really, they've been getting close. They just want to get that win. They want to get that first win, give themselves that bit of confidence. But uh, I think out at Warren Boo, Central United. Mm, should be a cracking game. And I'll tell you what, talk yeah. about cracking games. Eastern yeah. Rangers and Kimber Districts, the traditional rivalry renewed at Rudow and both teams suffering from uh, some nasty injuries to key players. Yes, I believe that Rangers, uh, Amy Allen, uh, a knee, um, an ACL, so oh, no. uh, will um, be going under the knife, I suggest. Um, and, of course, Chelsea out for Kimber. So they probably negate each other as such as far as experience and skill and all those sorts of things go. So both sides will be looking to uh, cover uh, those two players. But, yeah, um Oh, this is going to be really, really interesting, really interesting. Um, both teams have a young goaler. Uh, Eastern um, Rangers have Nicole Symes and um, Kimber have young Lucy Klingberg. So it's this is the first time that um, these two girls are going to be under absolute immense pressure. And I'm talking goal for goal, centre pass for centre pass um, yeah. sort of pressure uh, at at that level. And it'll be very interesting to see how, how they hold up, um, I would suggest. Um, certainly, that the, in both for both sides, the, the accuracy in the goal circle is um, utmost importance because both sides have such strong defence lines. Mm. So, yeah, I, look, I I reckon Kimber might just get the wood on Rangers this time round. Okay, well, I know uh, big call, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is I'm a big call, but it's never, uh, never out of the realms of possibility with these guys. So, no, look. absolutely. Look, the centre court. Oh, you know, um, Jordy McCollum um, coming in for Kimber um, is a big in for them through there, and Rangers wouldn't have matched up against her. Um, before, um, mind you, a, a young out, um junior uh, that she was, but um, and she's a very interesting player, and they will want to keep her uh, very much out of the play. Um, so it'll be interesting to see just what uh, Kelly um, Richardson does there to um, to combat the drive that uh, Geordie will provide. Mm. All right, let's move to Great Flinders netball, and we'll have a look back to last week's matches. Now we're all pretty much as predicted, to be fair. Uh, Cummins, Kapini, Cougars, uh, they had a very, very easy win in the end, 61 to where United 23, as we would have thought. Yeah, absolutely. And look, the, the Air United girls... They keep trying. There's no question about that. They're working hard. I know that they've uh, got uh, Donna going out to do some um, training with them. Donna McComb going out to do some training with them tonight. They're they're aware of the fact that they're going through a development time. But um, you know, their their defenders um, in uh, Red coming in uh, Sasha Stratford last week. They battled so hard all day uh, against. Um, Actually, quite a young circle to start off with, Hannah Green and and Molly Burns. But uh, they were they found their range really early. Those two young girls, and it was certainly set up a a very good uh, first half scoreline for um, the Cougars girls. And uh, you know, any team that's got Jet Green running through and controlling the middle court is uh, going to obviously um, be way above anybody else. And uh, but having said that, young Marty Masson, she's coming along in leaps and bounds each week. She's getting um, standing up and taking on the challenges that are thrown at her and. You know, she takes her fair share of intercepts through there. So, mm. yeah, they're, they're working hard. And the centre's there, um, Hannah Green for Cougars and young Taylor Milligan um, in the centre for, for Saints. But pretty much the way we expected. But, uh, you know, the, the Air United girls, they, they need to hang on in there and uh, they'll only get better. That's right. No, keep plugging away. Uh, Tumby Bay, they had a solid win as well over United. Yolanda, we predicted this and almost the margin too. Uh, we said about 15. Well, 47 to 31. That's nearly 15. Nearly 15, nearly 15. Look, the young Yolanda girls are a, a bit like the Air United uh, girls. They, uh, they're they finding their feet and uh, they're improving each week. They probably wouldn't have been that disappointed with that scoreline because um, it could have really blown out, um, but it, it didn't. They were able to sort of keep it to around about that 15. So for a young group up against the experience that um, Tumby um, have got in each area of the court um, and the strength that they've got on the day um, was probably uh, not a bad effort. Having spoken to a couple of the, the girls, that uh, Yolanda girls, um, you know, they said it was tough and well, it was another loss, but, you know, I said, keep your heads up and uh, you're only, get, only going to get better. And certainly there's plenty of teams that have been beaten by a lot more than 15 by Tumpy Bay Absolutely. over the years. Absolutely. Absolutely there is. So uh, good game of netball, that one. And speaking of 15, well, Elliston Districts, 
They did a number on lock. Didn't expect the uh, the score line here that we got. Um, Forty to just twenty five. So lock goalies must have been off on the day. Yes, they were. And at half time, it was actually only five um, in it. And uh, the the second quarter. Um, Elliston District's only won it by one goal. So mm. it was um, a very interesting first half. However, talking to Tara, the second half, the wheels fell off a little bit um, with Locke and uh, they sort of weren't really valuing the ball and they had lots of turnover ball and, uh, you know, just a, a little bit of rush of blood and they were bombing the ball into their goal as well. Not a really good tactic when Kelsey Hull uh, and Nikki Schubert are sitting back in the defence side of things for Ellison District's um, you know, they, they're they going to be a fantastic defence unit, that uh, Ellison District side. There's no um, question about that. And uh, Zoe Phelps uh, and uh, Charlie Mon- Monane through the centre court. Um, you know, Zoe, she puts so much pressure over the uh, the passes into the circle as well and, and gets her fair share of turnovers through the um, centre court there too. So, yeah, Ellison and Districts were certainly... Kate, having talked to Kate Baker, she said that the scoreline probably didn't really indicate the skill of the game. She said it was actually quite a skillful game, but uh, yeah, their goalies were just um, way. Kate Lowby um, was just way more accurate um, in the goals for uh, for them, and uh, that got them over the line. Excellent work, yes. So, uh, Elliston Districts, keep on keeping on. They've got an interesting game this week, which we'll get to in a moment. But uh, first, I reckon this is match of the round coming up this week. Tumby Bay taking on Locke. It's at Tumby Bay. And Locke, uh, they should be grumpy after last week. Uh, yes, and if they're not the coaches. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, they actually should match up player for player um, very evenly. I think this is, like you said, this could, well, well, it will be the match of the round, I think. And uh, uh, Locke have Ellen Reid back in and uh, they've tried a couple of different things. They've uh, tried Sarah Skinner out at uh, wing defence, giving her a run out of the, the goal circle. And uh, she's finding a little bit of the ball out there, which um, Tara is quite happy with. Um, but having Ellen um, back in the goal circle, I think, will settle that end down for them. But then you look at the fact that they're going to have uh, – and Tanya Habner will be a goal attack and they're going to throw – Tumby are going to throw Stacey Curtis uh, up against Tanya. So that will be a very interesting matchup. Uh, there's no question about that. And uh, so – you know, it's going to be tough for the, um, for their goalers, even with Ellen back in. But um, mm. in Tumby, uh, both sides have got a couple of young ones, um, but then they've, both sides have also got quite a bit of experience. Um, and uh, Kennedy uh, McNamara is certainly finding her feet through the centre court with Tumby um, being back there this year. And uh, she's certainly uh, giving them plenty of drive through there. So, uh, yeah, I think this will be a very even game. Um, I'm thinking in the end maybe Tumby just. Mm, all right. Ramblers and United Yolanda. Well, let's talk about them next. This should be an interesting game too and probably equal billing for match of the round because I don't think there'll be much in this one. Ramblers should win though. Oh, they should. They certainly should and there'll be a grumpy coach there if they don't. <laughs> uh, but uh, both, both teams have got some um, really good young talent that they've got on display and um, having during the week, um, we had some trials, many uh, trials for the uh seeing netball car- um, school carnival that happens down here in Lincoln. And uh, so I was, was having a look at some of these girls and uh, they're certainly coming along. And uh, yeah, I know that um, Keeley's got, uh, uh, has put uh, Lily Nettle into the centre um, and she said she's been really happy with uh, with that move. And uh, she's got uh, Matilda Creddy in goals with her and she says that's coming along quite nicely. Uh, not sure, she wasn't 100% sure whether they would have Abby um, Burrows back this week or not, but if that will be a huge in uh, for them and uh, we'll just make it that little bit harder again for Yolanda. Um, but uh, Abby Cash and, uh, and uh, Elsie Madden, the two young ones for um, that are in the um, A grade for Yolanda uh, are both coming along quite nicely. Uh, Elsie and Lacey, um, very young goal circle um, and uh, will have a real battle with the height of Kira Simons and um, if Abby is if Abby's in there. But, um, yeah, uh, Rambler's too good, I think. Mm, all right. And uh, the last match of the round for us to talk about, Elliston Districts. They will take mm. on Air United at home at Elliston. They'll start unbackable favourites and should win comfortably. They should. And, you know, for poor Air United, it doesn't get any easier. And they have to uh, travel to Elliston. Um, so uh, Elliston will certainly throw on a great day for them. There's no question about that. 
um, but I don't know that they'll come away with uh, a win. Elliston will be red hot favourites here. Um, they've got Zali Newton back in, um, and other than that, they're unchanged. So they're really getting some consistency together there, and uh, Kate's pretty happy about that. Um, you know, Kate Lowby is actually really becoming quite a force back in the um, in the goals for, for Elliston Districts, and so oh, Red Carmody and uh, Sasha Stratford are certainly going to have their time cut out there. There's no question about that. Um, they, yeah, uh, putting Zali back in there with the movement that she's got um, with Kate. They, yeah, they, their time's going to be certainly cut out. Um, and uh, you know, their defence line uh, for Elliston Districts with, um, sorry, that's. Oh, going to have a sneeze. Sorry, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Kelsey Hull and, uh, and Nikki Schubert, like, you've got the height of um, Kelsey. You've got the speed and strength of Nikki Schubert, a, a coach's dream, I would suggest. Uh, so Air United, the, their two young goalies, they're really going to um, have a lot of pressure on them through there, and they're going to know that they've played a game of netty. Uh, by the end of the day, there's no doubt about that. But, yeah, look, the experience of Ellison Districts is just all over the court. You know, Heberman, Manane and Phelps through the centre, it's going to be a tough day at the office for the Air United girls. Um, but, you know, they'll give it – I have no doubt they'll give a fair dink and crack of it, and um, they will enjoy the uh, – the camaraderie that will be provided for them. But, uh, yeah, Ellison Districts will uh, notch up another win here, I think. Yeah, you'd think so. Uh, should be an interesting round of netball across the EP. Joe, anything else before we wrap up? I just fantastic to everybody who is supporting um, all of the new uh, associations and the new makeup and the, the uh, new style programs for um, some. You know, some club, uh, some associations aren't used to having a buy. Some aren't used to um, actually having more than uh, three games in a round. Uh, so, but everybody seems to be getting out and getting uh, involved and uh, um, supporting wh- which whoever is ha- hosting the home games. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's just fantastic to see, Jason. And, uh, yeah, no, other than that, yes, there have been some association sides selected, which um, I will go through, if that's okay, next week, sure. uh, leading up, obviously leading up into the uh, the Lock Regional Carnival. But uh, when I can do everybody, um, then, yeah, we might have a little wrap-up about that next week. Perfect. All right. Until then, enjoy the netball this weekend and stay warm. Yes, we will. You too. Thanks, Heath, Jay.